So this is our very first class of the summer of 2022. And I think we've decided that there's been maybe three sessions that we've had, three seasons. And we have been doing yoga throughout all the seasons. And so today we have an absolutely gorgeous day. And it's really, really warm, but it is so beautiful. And I love the opportunity to be somewhere where we can just be in the outdoors and feel the breeze and hear the birds and know that we're connected to something greater than just ourselves. You know, we have this community, we have this beautiful wide world, we have Mother Earth under our feet, we have the heavens up above our heads. And the practice of yoga is nearly 6,000 years old. And it's very, very applicable today in our 21st century lives. So what I'll do with you guys and what we'll do together is we'll do some breathing, some mindfulness, which I call paying attention. Your papers are flowing away. Oh, they are? Excuse me. Oh, there we have it. The distractions. <laughs> Minimizing distractions <laughs> is part of this practice, which is very difficult to do in our busy, busy lives, which are often very noisy. And there are many, many distractions and things to take our attention away. So uh, my name is Sheila Magalhaes. And as you know, uh, I've been doing this for quite a long time, nearly 30 years. And it is the work that I love to do, which is to introduce people to yoga. How many of you guys have been with me before? Almost everybody. Yes, brand new. Have you done any yoga before? Yes. Sir. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Good, good. So this version of practice is done in a chair but not just seated all the time, we can also stand up and we can use the chair for balance and support. And then if you feel like you'd rather sit, you can sit. So anything that we do in our practices that would start on the floor can be done in a chair, all right? So the first thing to think about is posture and the way that you hold yourself upright and tall. So think about the shoulders drawing back a bit, yeah. And your feet, can you feel them on the ground? Yeah, right? And I'd like to invite you to put one hand just over your heart space and the other hand just lightly over on top of that. And if it's comfortable for you to close your eyes, you can close your eyes and turn your attention inward and see if you can have a sense of the warmth under your hands, the heartbeat, the feel of your breath, the way the collarbones rise and fall, the way the rib cage expands and opens, and the way your heart literally rises up towards your hands, lifting up the heart space. Having a sense of the qualities here, the breath, the heartbeat, consider what we like to call life force energy that comes in with every breath you take. And let this practice be a practice of infusing yourself with that life force energy, healing energy, circulating around the space of the heart. Every breath you take gives your heart a bit of a hug. And while you hold your hands here at the heart, I'd like to invite you to bring in a very special quality gratitude, something that you're grateful for. Just let something rise up, something that you're grateful for. Even science tells us that a daily dose of gratitude helps to reduce stress and tension and anxiety. Something you're grateful for. And then consider someone in your life who you'd like to perhaps share a peaceful practice with. Someone who can't be here today. Someone near or far or beyond. And invoke them into your heart. So that through these practices, we can share the love and the light that you have in your heart with one another. So we can feel a deep connection which is part of this practice of yoga, to join or yoke together. Take a big full breath in 
And exhaling, hmm, a little bit of a sigh, let your hands just drop down to your lap any way you like. They can rest one on top of the other, they can rest on your knees. Keep those shoulders drawn back. And if you haven't already, shift your breathing so it's in and out through the nose. There's a lot of pollen in the air. This is allergy season. It might not be totally comfortable, so if it's not, that's okay too. And see if you can do that breath in and out through the nose and at the same time keep your face relaxed, your jaw, your neck, your brow behind your eyes. Maybe even a little soft Buddha smile. There's a wonderful teacher, his name is Thich Nhat Hanh. He passed recently, but he was in his 90s and he was an amazing meditation teacher, author, and a peace activist. And he has very simple ways to help us to be mindful and to rest in the present moment. So I'd like to read some of his words and follow along. He says, breathing in, I know that I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know that I'm breathing out. As the in-breath grows deep, the out-breath grows slow. Breathing in makes me calm. Breathing out gives me ease. With the in-breath, I smile. With the out-breath, I release all tension. Breathing in, I know that I'm alive. Breathing out in this present moment. Breathing in, there is only this present moment Breathing out, it is a wonderful moment. So again and again through the practice, I'll say, where's your mind? And you'll be like, oh, I'm thinking about supper. Or, ooh, I was worrying about that phone call. Or, geez, what did I do last night? And how do I finish doing that tonight? Whatever your brain is doing. And I'll say, where's your mind? You go, oh yeah. You take a breath, you smile, and you bring your attention back. And we'll do that over and over and over again, and it's just practice. So, having your hands resting down on your lap or your knees, take a full breath in, and this time when you exhale, let your head tip down so that your chin rests towards the hollow of your throat. So your head's just dropping down, and your eyes can stay closed if you like, or you can keep them soft, open, but try not to get distracted by what's around you. Then begin to just move your head slowly from side to side. All that is is running your chin along the curve of your collarbone really easily from side to side, and sometimes it's noisy and crackly and crunchy, and that's very normal. Sometimes it's tender or tight, and you might even have an old injury or something that you're like, oh yeah, oof, that feels, I'm not sure about that. So what I'd like to say to you is, if something doesn't feel quite right or you're not sure, go extra slow or stop and just be here breathing and sitting and listening and know that you don't have to go far fast or even completely follow along. Now the next time your head comes down chin to the hollow of the throat, leave it there for a moment. And then just pick your head up as though you're looking straight ahead towards me and square your shoulders back and simply look over your right shoulder, right? And what I'm doing is I'm mirroring you, so I'm gonna go the other direction, but you don't have to think about right and left too much, just follow along. Look out of the corners of your eyes and then bring your gaze forward and turn and look over the opposite shoulder. And I know this is slow, but this is the way that we can move with mindfulness, with comfort, and curiosity, not forcing or rushing. Come back to the center. Once more, turn and look out of the corners of your eyes. Just turning and keep the shoulders squared and the collarbones nice and broad. And one more time, turning. Just turning. We often get really sticky and tight 
in the neck and shoulders, we know that. We say, like, that's such a pain in the neck. And, it's, and it is, right? It's like, how does that happen? But it's true. And then come forward. Now again, drop your head down, chin to the hollow of your throat. Only this time, take your hands and lace them behind the back of your head and lean forward a little bit, just so you start to feel the long line of your spine, which is your central line of communication and information. It's the house of your central nervous system. Inhale, lift your head up. We're connecting breath and movement. Now, tip your head back, skyward. Elbows press back like you're unfolding some wings. Not pushing. And then let's come forward again. And you're exhaling when you dive down. You might even hear yourself breathe. And then inhale, lift up. And there's often a pause at the top and the bottom of the exhalation and inhalation. Now look forward. Stretch your arms up like it's a celebration. Like you're saying yes. <laughs> yes, good. And then tip the head back a tiny little bit and look up towards the sky to this amazing, gorgeous day. Open, ready, receptive to whatever comes your way. And then we continue to move into the joints and the tender places in the body. Bring your fingertips down to your shoulders if you can. I'm just lightly touching my shoulders. Then roll the elbows like you are unfurling those gorgeous wings. Yeah. So this practice moves into all of the joints of the body. It brings in lubrication, blood supply, synovial fluid, and let's say it also brings in energy and the life force. So if there's a place that feels a little tender, a little sore, you can concentrate on that place in that space and send that life force, that energy to that place. Now let's go in the opposite direction. It gets a little bit complicated when you do that. Like what? There you go. Yes, good. Mindful movement. So we can do what we call energy concentration and direct it like you've got a laser beam that goes right to the place that needs your attention. And they say that where your attention goes, the energy always follows, right? Reach up again. Good. Wriggle your fingers. Circle your wrists around. Yeah. Good. Let the shoulders drop down a little bit, just like, ah, yes, good job. Good. All right, now, arms to T, like you've got wings reaching out again. Good, beautiful. Nice, turn your palms up. Good. And then turn the palms down and turn your thumbs down and feel how the shoulders roll. Mm, you can growl if you need to. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would. And then turn your palms up. Excellent. <laughs> and bring your arms up overhead. So everybody looks like they've got pretty good shoulders this afternoon. Sometimes you have a little soreness on one side, so maybe you'd just be doing this with one arm, right? That's okay. It's all right. Can you take your right hand and bring it kind of behind the back of the neck? Oh, yeah. And this left hand is going to reach over towards the top of your head or maybe even to the elbow. That's kind of far away. So maybe you can just hold here or here. Yeah. And then squeeze your belly in a little. Ooh. And then you sit tall. Excellent job. And are you breathing? Yes. <laughs> Paying attention to the breath. Reach both arms up. This is a big shoulder stretch and a tricep stretch. Bring your left hand down and the right hand reaching around. Hey, maybe one side feels different than the other. Does that ever happen to you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We are not perfectly symmetrical. We're just not, it's okay. Uh, no, it makes us all unique and amazing, right? Good, and then both arms reach up. Oof, nice. Turn the palms down and let your hands reach down. They'll rest sort of by your side and then inhale, come back up. And these are called sun breaths. Exhaling, you see how we're connecting breath and movement and concentrating on the feeling of just floating those arms up, reaching, and floating the arms down, releasing. Good. One more time, inhaling, reach, like you're scooping up all that earth energy and exhaling, creating a great big circle of light around your body. 
Now here's something pretty special, something we all need, a big hug. Wrap your arms around yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yes? Yeah. Right? Yes. Oh my gosh, did you miss hugs? Oh yes. Oh yeah. Give some oh, hugs. Yeah. So give yourself a big squeeze, a big, big squeeze. And then tuck your chin and lean forward and down. Just until you feel a stretch between your shoulder blades. I like to call that spot behind your heart, the cradle of the heart. Cradle of the heart. Then inhale and come all the way back up. Good. Now another thing that feels a little tricky. You have your elbows like this, you have your hands like this. Switch them. The opposite arm on top. <laughs> There's something about the brain that goes, what? Yeah. You want me to do what? And it's because we're so habitual. Yeah. We always step forward with one foot. We always, always reach around with a certain arm. We always move in a certain way. So yoga says, let's try to, to mix it up a little bit. Okay? Let's mix it up a little bit. So drop your chin and curl in again. Just a little curl. Right? It might be a tiny little bend. It might be that you're bringing your elbows down towards your lap. But don't compare yourself to anybody else. Inhale, rise up. Good, now take your hands and just slide them, them down. down, your arms past, your forearm, upper arms, elbows, forearms, wrists, fingertips like there's taffy between your fingers and then pull it apart and shake it out. Ugh. <laughs> you ever feel like you got heaviness, something heavy, something worrisome? You could just be like, ugh, you can just let it go. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just let it go, let it go, let it go. All right. Now take your fingertips out in front of you. Yeah. And just circle your wrists around. You can kind of make little fists. I've been noticing that my knuckles are a little sore, my hands are a little sore, and I'm thinking, mm, arthritis, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this, this feels really good. My yoga teacher, she'll be 80 this year. She said one of her students said the only two things you cannot escape is taxes and arthritis. <laughs> yeah, so what we're doing is we're getting just that fluid and mobility and it's just that pliable feeling into the joints. Now, take your fingers and lace them together. Yeah. Flip the palms forward. Yeah, good. And then lift those arms with slow motion, breath up. Sit up real tall. Yeah, good job, good job. Separate your hands and your arms out to the side and down alongside of you. Now we'll take a twist. This is a, a movement to the right. So your left hand is going to reach for your chair or your knee, either one. And then this, left hand goes kind of behind and now look over your shoulder. So before we just turn the head now, I'd like for you to explore moving your whole torso in a, in a twist. So you're looking over your shoulder. Yeah, yes, you've got it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it could be something really soft, just really super soft, or you could tug a little bit against the edge of your chair or knee and look out of the farthest corners of your eyes. Yes. Good. Now inhale, turn to the front towards me, take your hands away, reach over with your right hand <laughs> and your left hand kind of behind you and then sit really tall and regal because your, your spinal twist comes from having a very long extended spine that's very healthy to turn your body in this way. Imagine you're trying to back out of the driveway, right? And you gotta be able to turn to back out of the driveway. I know people who lose their licenses because they can't turn to look over their shoulder. Right, yes, because it's a big deal to have that mobility. Yeah, what if you have your potato chips in the back seat of the car after you go to the grocery store? <laughs> right, you want to reach them. They're back there. Good. Now come around. Let's do one more time each side. Like you're wringing out some tension. Ooh, give a twist, give a squeeze. See, your internal organs love these squeezes. It's good for your digestive system. Hmm. And one more time the other way, inhaling. Exhale, and it's just that light squeeze. You might even hear a gurgle of digestion. Yeah, a little, oh, did you get a little chiropractic no. adjustment? No. <laughs> okay, back to center and your hands by your knees. All right, lift your shoulders to your ears. Squeeze them back and slide them down. Good, yeah. 
Lift them up, squeeze them back, slide them down. One more time, three's a charm. Lift them up, squeeze them back, and slide them down. Very nice. Now, hands are by your knees. These are called cat-dog curls. In a floor class, you'd be on your hands and knees, moving your spine in all directions. We get to do the exact same thing, but in a chair. Oh yeah? Someday, maybe I'll give you a little demo of, <laughs> of my practice. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. All right, so you lift your chin, your chest, and you look up. So you're puffing out the heart, and you're, you're doing a bit of a back bend, right? The opposite is called a cat curl, where you round down, and you tuck the chin a little, and you press back. Can you feel that? Yeah, it's almost, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like kind of like what we did when we were giving a hug. Then inhale, come up, lift your head, your chest, arches, and lift your chin. So you open up the throat, the chest, the heart. Yes, good. And then round down and curl. And when you do, hug your belly in a little bit. Cat curl. Inhale, rise up. Opening, arching, lifting skyward. And then rounding and tucking. This is your last one. Come to center, lift up, good. Keep your left hand here, put your right arm to your side, turn out your palm and lift your arm up and do a side stretch. Oh yes, that's oh, my favorite to look at this posture, so pretty. You feel all the spaces here between your ribs, yeah, good. And then come up, put that arm down Bring down your left, palm out, and lift up and across. Good job. Lift the chin, chest a little bit. Yes, nice adjustment, good work. Now both arms back to the sky in that celebration. Look up. And slowly let your hands come down. Bring your feet so they're a little closer together your right leg, stretch it out in front of you. Point and flex your foot. I know it seems like it could be fairly easy, but move your foot around your ankle. Can you feel your quad, that thighs going, get nice and tight? One direction and the other. Good full breathing. Good, and then just pause for a moment, holding that foot out with a very soft point. Squeeze your belly in, sit up nice and tall. Good. And then put that foot down. Other side. Pick it up, circle around. One direction, the other. Sometimes it gets a little crampy, it does for me. It's like, oh, I'm asking my muscles to do something I haven't done for a little while. One way, the other. So they get kind of confused. <laughs> Good. Point and flex and then hold for a moment. Nice and strong, your foundation. Put that foot down. I know from the past that some folks have replacement parts, hips and knees. So some of these things that we do aren't always completely accessible. So you kind of get close to the shape if you have some kind of an old injury or if you have something that's preventing you from moving. And even just sitting like this and being tall and open and breathing and smiling has great benefit. Okay, all the rest of it, it's just for fun. So this is a hip stretch that some of you might remember. And what it involves is picking up this right leg and I have to kind of sit on the edge of my chair some more. Oh boy, and can I get the heel up? <laughs> hmm, hmm, <laughs> maybe, and maybe, yeah, a little bit, very good. Now I'm holding on to my ankle and my knee and sitting up tall, because that's the first thing to do. Right? And then the next is to take a little forward fold. Now, see, I come back up again. What I'd like to invite you to do is to do that as though your heart is coming forward. So our first inclination is to go down like this. But for this particular pose, let's come forward like the heart is coming forward. You can growl if you need to. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I feel that in my hip, in my thigh. Good, you don't want to strain, 
Good. And there's no competition. And are you breathing? Good. Good. And then inhale, come up. Exhale there. And just take a moment to let everything sort of flood through your body and feel the sensations of that. That's good. Exhale, come over. With leading with your heart. Yes, nice following instructions. Good work. Part of this practice of yoga is the practice of deep listening, paying attention on purpose, like I said. Yes, and then come all the way back up. You're also getting a nice stretch down the length of the spine. You feel that too? Mm. Yep. Unfold that leg. Ooh, and put it down. Don't think too much. Go to the other side. Oh, this leg feels like it's really heavy. <laughs> yes. All right, then. Yep, and you, yeah, it's okay. So what you can do is just be this, this, or this. You'll get all the same benefit. Good. I, can do this one. I know, isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. And it's all okay. So lead with your heart, come forward. Try not to grit your teeth or hold your breath. <laughs> Caught you. Because <laughs> that's what we do. You know, something gets hard, you're like, you know, putting a thread through the eye of a needle. Yeah. You never breathe, do you? No. Ooh, hey, this side feels different for me. Like, oh, hmm, not so bad. I still want to growl. <laughs> All right, inhale, come back up. We're going to do it one more time. So sit up very, very tall just to feel that elegant, long, open, spacious. Yeah. What happens when you pay attention to your posture is there's more room for you to breathe. Our lungs are giant and they need space. And when we hunch and curl and fall over, they lose that space, also our bellies. And it's kind of a problem in our world because we're always looking down at devices, phones, tablets, computers. They call that tech neck because your back of your neck gets really tense. Let's do this one more time, one more time. Not thinking too much, just breathe. Good, taking good care of yourself. Very nice hip stretch. This is a version of a posture called pigeon pose, pigeon pose. Then inhale, come back up. And exhale. Excellent, now unwind. So we've worked in the knees, the ankles, toes, fingers, wrists, shoulders, time to stand up. So you can use your chair, plant your feet, get on up, ooh, unfold those knees. Ha! Ah, shake it out a little bit, just a little bit. Do a little wiggle. <laughs> Well, that's your yoga dance. <laughs> good job, good job, good job, good job. All right, now, I do like to use the chairs, even though, you know, we, we're upright and mobile, but the floor's a little uneven, the carpet, the ground. So let's come behind your chair, all right, behind your space, and make any little adaptions that you need. All right, so the chair is just a like, having a kickstand, right? It's there for you. You can hold it with one hand or two. And I'll lead these poses, these standing poses, so that you can use the chair for support, all right? So let's start with taking the feet wider apart. Wider apart, good. And then draw back your shoulders. Okay, so can you feel the thighs, knees, ankles? Now, this is almost like a little bit of Simon Says, because I'll say, put your foot this way, your hand that way, and look this way. So you follow along as best you can, but you can always stop any way and any time. So this right foot is going to turn out to the side, right? Yeah, so it points to the side. This left foot turns in a little bit, and that, and that feels better when, when it does, because the hips can feel a little more comfortable. Take your right hand and slide it down your leg. There, good, nice. And then this hand can stay, this left hand can stay where it is or it can reach up. Yeah, so go the other way, put the right hand down. There you go. <laughs> Look at this, this is beautiful. This is triangle pose. Now for support, this right hand take, can take your chair if you want and then your left arm can reach up and you're completely, yeah, supported. Can you feel that? Now it's like, oh yeah, more freedom, right? Yeah, that's good, that's good. I love the chair or not. Now come up, that's called triangle pose. And everything you do on one side, what do we do? Do the other. So change your feet. 
Turn out your left foot. That, both legs will be straight, so turn your left foot this way. There you go. And then the right foot has to angle in a little bit. Yes, yes. And then these thigh muscles get super squeezed. Can you squeeze them? Put your hand right on your thigh and then squeeze the muscle. Can you feel it? Yeah. yeah. So that's your muscle in what I call engagement, right? Contraction. That makes you very strong. Slide down your left arm. All right, good. Now, we have choices here. The right arm comes up, you got to balance, or you can hold the chair with your left hand. I know that's a lot of lefts and rights. <laughs> you got it, you got it, you got it. Breathe, breathe, good. Nice work. And all the warm ups helped prepare us to be ready for this pose. Now come all the way up. Big breath. Parallel your feet. Hold your chair. We're back up to where we started. Good. Now look down at your feet and set them what I call hip width apart. So I'll show you, I'll, you guys stay where you are, but hip width apart is my ankles are underneath my hip bones. So it has nothing to do with the sides of your hips, but that your feet are underneath your hip bones. And that's nice and lined up under your knees, hip bones, shoulders, crown of your head, okay? Keep your left hand, um, let's do it the other way. Keep your, yeah, keep your left hand on your chair and put your right hand at your heart like it was early on, right? Stand up very tall. Yeah, can you feel the way the heart rises up? Right, another thing to think about for stability is that your belly, you draw it in a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and then you'll feel a little squeeze in the backside, your legs are active, everything is active. This posture will be called mountain pose. So if you're feeling comfortable, bring both hands together. Lace your fingers to steeple and slide your arms up. Now here's a variation. You can have one hand down, one arm up. Right, it's the same thing. Yes, good, awesome, beautiful, beautiful. Hold however you are, both arms up, one arm up. Doesn't matter. Can you feel your feet pressing into the ground? Yeah, you feel them. We never feel our feet. <laughs> we were walking around all the time. Good job. Now, everybody lean over to the right. That's called half moon. Maybe the arms are steeple or you're holding your chair. Doesn't matter. Yes. And then come up and steeple over to the left and maybe both arms are reaching or you've got a hand on the chair. Half moon, half moon. Excellent job, yes. Then inhale, come up. Good, separate your hands and let them float out to the side and down, good. Hands on your chair. So this might take a little creativity. I would like to see everyone step back a couple of steps. So I know we don't have as much room as we sometimes do. Bend your knees a little bit and stick your butt back behind you and drop your head. If you had a lot of room, you could really stretch back. I like to do this stretch, holding on to the countertop in my kitchen. It's the best stretch ever. So you get to kind of come down. Now feel free to bend your knees and drop your head. Good, so just remember this stretch and maybe try it again at home. Sometimes I even just put my hands on the wall. Now lift up your head to look towards me and your right foot is gonna step forward. Uh-huh. Your left foot that's back there, draw your shoulders back. The left foot turns out a little bit, just a little bit, it's kind of like pointing to two o'clock. All right, now I'm bent into my right knee. I don't know if you can see it. And my back foot is on the floor. Okay. Keep your left hand on the, on the edge of your chair, or on your right hand, and lift your left arm up. Good. Now you're bent into the knee. You're opening the chest, the heart. Perhaps if you're feeling stable, both arms rise up. This is called warrior pose. And you focus on one spot and sometimes you need a chair. Hmm? And you have that Buddha smile. Look how strong you are. This is so beautiful. Warrior pose, yes. Good, now the hands come down. Whew. Good, we're switching sides. So 
Get a little bit of a tension on the front foot and step up your back foot. Oof. And then the back foot goes back a little bit. Uh-huh. Yep. The back foot's angled a tiny bit out to the side because you feel how that keeps the hips feeling pretty comfortable and the front knees bent and the shoulders are back and you've got a chair so you can be completely confident here to hold your ground, to be steady, right? Fierce, loyal, warrior, reach up. And then if you like, stare at one spot, don't move your eyes and the other arm might come up or it might stay down. It's just an exploration, yes, in balance. Yes, yes, good. My whole body's kind of shivering a little bit. Yeah, because everything's working to hold me up. Good, good. And then bring your hand down, both hands down. Ah, good. Can you feel the heat come on when you're in that pose? <laughs> it's like 100 degrees right now. Soften into the front knee and step up. There you go, good. Now I'm gonna be behind my chair again. Shoulders back, standing tall. So the poses in yoga are named after things in nature, people, storytelling, mythology, or how they feel. So when you're standing in a mountain pose, it gives you the sense of the strength and stability of a mountain. When you're standing in the warrior pose, it's like, I can, I can do anything. You can step out and do anything. Warrior has a couple of variations. Some of them I just love, they're so pretty. So that was warrior one. Warrior two will take your feet wider apart, okay? I have a friend who can teach these poses sitting in a chair. Like you can actually do all these poses seated. So there's something for everybody, which is so excellent about yoga, right? So you're either up on your feet or on your seat. So the same thing like our triangle pose, the right foot turns out to the side, the left foot angles in a little bit. This time you bend into your right knee. This side. Whoa. So see how I'm bent into the knee? Now, the first thing is my body wants to go this way, but let's keep the body upright. Keep this left hand down and just reach the right arm out. Now look over your right hand. And that's what you do, that's all you do. You bend into your knee, you look over your fingertips and you hold in stillness. And this is your warrior pose, but your back arm, if you like, might float up. And you keep looking over your right hand and smile your Buddha smile and feel all of your strength. So good. Now, everyone keep that right arm out, hold your chair with the left hand, flip the right palm up. This is called peaceful warrior. You keep your knee bent and just lift up your arm. Yes, and then look up. I'm looking right up to the sun. Yes, and the hand can hold your chair. Some people hold the back leg. Oof, but I'm feeling a little off balance on these cobblestones. Good, now to come out of it, bring your arm down. Straighten your leg, parallel your feet. Let out a sigh. <laughs> so the thing that's interesting is if someone walked by and they'd look, they'd be like, well, that doesn't look all that hard. But if you're holding a pose and you're breathing and you're hanging out for a little while, build some strength, build some heat, creates more balance, right? Groundedness. Let's go to the other side. So I'm gonna move my chair. So you have that nice wide stance, whatever's comfortable for you. You turn your left foot out. That's this way. And the right foot angles in a little bit. Uh huh. Traditionally, also, you'd be barefoot. Sometimes bare feet, for me, I can really grab a hold of the ground. Bend into your left knee. Keep your spine nice and straight. You know what to do. Take out your left arm and look over it. And trust yourself. If you like, you can float your right arm behind you. You don't even have to look at it. You don't even have to, to know if it's landed where, where you think it is. Just let it be where it is, right? Relax the shoulders down a little bit. Yeah, good. And breathe and just get really as still as you can for a couple of breaths. Warrior two. Nice. Hold the chair with the right hand. Flip open the left. Lean back and look up. 
peaceful warrior. Still bent into your front knee. So beautiful, strong, powerful, confident. What do you stand for? What do you believe in? Hold your warrior strength. And then start to lower the arm down and straighten your leg. And then your feet get more parallel. And you hold on to your chair. Now, how you doing? <laughs> You're doing great, I'd say. So good to be with you again. So fun. So now your feet turn out a little bit, both of them. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we had warrior one, warrior two. This is woman warrior. I told you we scared away the guys. But men do yoga too. So maybe we'll invite them in at some point. Both knees bend just a little bit. Now I've got a tender knee, so I'm just gonna go part way down just a little bit. Shoulders back. Mm -hmm. So this is a pretty firm foundation, right? Yeah. So if it's comfortable for you, both arms reach out. Both palms turn up. Both elbows bend. Or you're hanging on. Lift the elbows a little. Breathe in and out through your nose. Good job. Yes. Excellent work. Just a few breaths. Good. Then straighten your legs and reach your arms up. This is called five-pointed star. So fingertips, toes, crown of the head. You're kind of twinkling the star, right? Yes, good job. And then stillness and stretch out your fingers. My mom says you can't be depressed if you have your arms up and your heart open. <laughs> good. Turn your palms down slowly. Let your hands come down, resting by your thighs. And then get a hold of your chair and bring your feet, once again, about hip width apart. A lot of these poses feel like balancing poses because we are holding our balance. But some poses are specifically called balancing poses. And one of them is called tree pose. Do you remember that? Anybody? It's on one foot. You remember that? Yes, yes, yes. So you're on one foot. But so I will show you away from the chair. You really do get a kickstand. So your left leg is your sturdy, strong leg. Your right heel might come against the edge of your ankle. So what I've done is I've just put my heel like that. Can you see that? So my knee's out to the side, yeah. Yep. Now, some people actually put the foot up higher and feel pretty good there. And others is like, really? No, mm -mm. keeping my toes down. Have this right arm turn palm up and lift it up. Whoa, good. A trick or key to balancing poses is having a, a gaze that's really holding one spot. And if you want to try to pick up the other arm, you can. And if that feels like it's too much, I'm gonna hang on with you. <laughs> good. Wow, these look so good. Focus, balance, attention. Oh, wow, you're going to get a shower in your yoga class. <laughs> Bring your hand down. <laughs> My goodness. Are you getting wet? No. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> We're good. Well, we'll stand up for one pose and then we'll sit. Thank you for the shower. All right. Now, who remembers? I don't even remember. Oh, I know. We were on the left leg with the right foot. Switch sides. So I'm going to go kind of on the side of this chair. Now, your right leg is the tree trunk, the left foot. And if you're feeling like you want to do, do this in the chair, right, you can do the exact same thing. You totally can. So I'm holding the chair with the... Right hand, turn the palm. <laughs> okay, we ready? Inhale, arms reach. Yes, and if you feel like you want to, both arms can come up. Woo, good job. You got roots sinking in deep. 
You got stability. You have energy rising up from the soles of the feet. You're reaching up towards the sky. It's a perfect balance of strength and flexibility. Good. When the winds of change come, you just bend and sway and move and you don't snap and you don't get uprooted. Good. And then the arms come down. So the tree has metaphor and stories and sensation. Put your foot down. And just imagine and remind yourself that you can walk on uneven ground and still stay nimble and upright. And the balancing practices help you to do that. So let's sit. Oh, well, your bum, your bum's going to get wet. <laughs> your bum's are going to get wet. I don't want to Okay. Do you remember when you were a little kid and you'd just run in these sprinklers? Wasn't that fun? Nobody ever had a pool in the backyard or anything. You'd have to go and put on the sprinkler. <laughs> or the fire hydrant. Oh, man. That sounds like city living would be the fire hydrants. Yeah. And then you wouldn't just, you know, like run through. You'd dance, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Part of our yoga practice helps us to feel playful, joyful, youthful. You're moving your body in directions in ways that maybe you don't during the day on a regular basis. You get up on your feet, you twist and turn in all directions. You flood your body with that life force. You have a sense of being more open, more spacious, more free. So built into the practice of yoga, and people don't always know this, is meditation. And your yoga practice or your poses can be like a meditation. If you really focus in on what it feels like, what the shape is, how your body is in space, you have less room in your brain to think, 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 worry, organize, plan. So meditation is really a practice of returning back to the present moment. And every time you catch yourself thinking about something else, you just smile. It's not bad. It's not wrong. Meditation should be happy and welcoming to everything that comes in. Not like, oh, no, 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 I, I don't want to do that now. It's more like, let's just be with what is, right? So here's another invitation to close your eyes if you like to think about your posture. Notice what it feels like to have a nice, long, elegant spine, to have that space across the heart, that space around the belly. And before we begin here, notice, be aware of all of the sounds around you. Bird song, Voices, hum of traffic. Don't let anything disturb you, but just notice it. It just is. Sound hitting, vibrating in the eardrums. And just like the sounds come and go, let your thoughts just be wandering. If you'd like an anchor, something to pay attention to, your breathing is an excellent anchor. You can feel the breath coming in. You can feel the way your body responds to it. Feel your feet touching the ground. Allow the body to release as much tension as possible, just softer, softer but still upright. No worries, no worries. <laughs> going the other way, all's well. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, one of the things about practices that you really do want to have feel like you're in a safe space, when you feel like something's coming, you know, it's harder to really relax. 
Yeah. But even if it's chaotic around us, we can still be centered and be quiet. As soon as you know that you're in a safe place, that all's well. Yeah. So let this be a time of nourishing your mind, of quieting your mind. Attending to the breath, we have a chance to rest. We have a chance to quiet the mind, to soothe the nervous system, to nourish ourselves with the breath. And if thoughts arise when they do, because that's what they do, you notice them and then come back with a smile. Recognize that you do have the ability to untie the knots, to dissolve the tension. You do have the ability to quiet your mind. Enjoy that breath. Recognize that as you bring in peace and ease to your own heart, to your own mind and body, that you bring that ease to others, those who you come into contact with, those you love and care for. Your calm, quiet presence helps them. And then bring your hands back up. You can either lay your hands one over the other, over your heart, or you could even bring your hands into what we like to call the namaste position where your hands are pressed together with the thumbs towards the sternum. And in the yoga world, this practice that comes from the Eastern contemplative practices from India, this is a way to meet and greet one another with the hands to the heart. See so if you can feel the quality of energy between your hands and the quality of your heartbeat under your thumbs. And a metta meditation, which is a beautiful meditation for all beings everywhere, we offer it out together. So I'd like to read a line and then have you repeat after me, okay? You ready? May all beings be happy. May all beings be, May all beings be healthy. May all beings be free from suffering. May all beings know that all is well. Good. Then gradually, you open your eyes. You look around to one another, and with your hands here, you say namaste. Namaste, namaste it's a Sanskrit word. It means the light in me sees the light in you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being back again with me and to do this again. Woohoo! So good. I'm so proud of you all. That was so good.